Well, God is on the move. It was evident at the Converge Conference, and it is also evident in this woman. Janelle Taviano of Unrained Ministries is here with us. She was most recently in Africa in February, but her ministry was birthed by God many years ago. It's been a long time since we've had Janelle here at TV44, and I'm excited to hear an update of what God is doing through Unrained Ministries. Let's go jump way back to 2008, how God even started this all at the beginning. I was at home taking care of my mother with brain cancer. Our son's a web designer. He designed our, our website of Unrained, and a pastor in Africa got a hold of it. Little did I know that there is a ring of 13 pastors that would scam Americans on their emotions to come. And I'm not an emotional person, but God laid, it was during a time of war where they would line families up and gouge the children's eyes, cut off their nose, their ears, their lips, go to the next child. And so that type of a war was going on. And so God tugged at me. I literally cried for these people. And uh, so I got a hold of, they asked me to come and speak. And they promised me 5,000 people. That would be like saying, we're going to have a crusade in Westminster <laughs> of 5,000 mm -hmm. people. So I called Billy Graham's association, asked him if it was safe for a white lady at 50 to go over by herself to this area. I had seen that their ministry had been in Katali. And he said, they said, Janelle, there's no place to house 5,000 people in that area. It is not safe. And so I went back to my office in my house and I prayed and God said, I'm either God or I'm not. And Stanley Tam gave me my ticket money and said, how does it feel to be an evangelist, Janelle? Mm -hmm. As he prayed over me and I went. So you went that first time, you went alone? Yep. You went alone. You mentioned already that a group of 13 pastors that were scamming people, right? but yet God is bigger than scams, and right. he was starting something even bigger. Amen, and I, I didn't realize that they were scamming me until halfway through, so in 34 days, I had to get myself out of, I didn't have to, God got me out of mm -hmm. there, but that farm mentality said something wasn't right, and I realized what was going on, and yet 800 people got saved. I did speak to 5,000 people four nights in a row, Wow. and uh, God, God is real. So for many people, they would do that. They go over, they speak to 5,000 people, they come back, they move on with their life and they've done their thing. Right. But for Janelle, God was saying, no, this is just the start. That's right. This is the beginning. And you have been in Kenya every year since then, That's most right. recently in February, mm -hmm. God continues to move. That's right. And up to this day, uh, this year, over a thousand got saved. God came, Jesus Christ came to seek and to save the lost. And so we're not going into Africa as white stallions. We're going in with the word of God, with the truth, which Africa is really corrupt, even spiritually. The pastors can speak like anybody that we know, and you stand with your mouth open like you ought to write a book, and yet they are not true to the word of God. Hmm. And so our ministry is all about the truth of the word of God. We're all about seeking and saving the lost, period. So tell me a little bit about how God is infiltrating the word of God through unrained right there in that, that, in that area, in Kenya, right? You're in right. Kenya? The, um, the terrorists are invading Kenya all the time, and so the government is buckling down on, on, uh, on faith-based ministries. And so we were forced to take seven churches under our wings pretty quick, or they'd close them down. Mm -hmm. And yet we don't trust the seven churches because we know the corruption. And, but yet God has given us those seven areas rurally. So I work in Spencerville, Allen East, we're all rural. And uh, we're taking the word of God. I work with Benson Simeu and he's my kid's age. So I, he's like mm -hmm. a son to me and he's true to the word of God. And so we are literally going out in these churches. We are, we are ministering to the needs of people, building huts giving tarps to the homeless, giving them food, whatever the need is, we're meeting that to show how much Jesus Christ loves them right where they're at. Now, one way that God is using you is in the realm of medical needs. That's Tell me a little bit about how God has started mm -hmm. building up a medical opportunity there. I was walking one year, probably 2012, in a cornfield, literally over stalks, and this mother and her little boy was out there, and she was giving him 40 shillings, which is 40 cents about, to go to the doctor by himself because she could not afford to go with him. And he was like five years old. 
and I could see the frustration in her eyes. And I looked at her and I said, what if we put a hospital right here? And I pointed over to the next field and her eyes went like, oh my word. And that's when God called for the hospital. Our son Tug works with um, producing and, and promoting Christian concerts. And he had the opportunity to meet Bubba Watson for five minutes on a basketball court. And they wanted to do this event for a fundraising thing. And he, Bubba says, well, who would we give our money to? And Tug says, the only person I know is my mom. And so the next year, Bubba wrote a $104,000 check to Unrain Ministries. We put up a stoned 150-bed hospital in 2013, and that hospital still sits empty. Now, why, why would it sit empty? Why, what stopped the progress? I don't have any more Bubba Watsons. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I keep, uh, like I told you, I don't like to sell Girl Scout cookies. I'm not into marketing Jesus Christ. And so I just keep following his lead and I haven't been led to the right person, I guess. So what is the next step in that? What needs to yet be done in that hospital in the order hosp to make it mm -hmm. be functional? We have, we have it ready for plumbing. We have it ready for electrical. It, it's going to cost us $75,000 to get all the equipment in. It is, it is ready to go. It's just an empty shell. And yet God let me two years ago, lay in bed and hear wailing. For two days, they hire people for a funeral a half a mile from where our compound is. And to hear, it's almost like a coyote. All continual, continual, continual. And I thought, God, why, did, why do I have to lay here and know that a half a mile away, a lady died because she couldn't afford? Over there, if you walk to the doctor's uh, door, if you do not have cash in hand, they will watch you die. They do not play games. We were sending money over for a lady with a huge goiter. And we were, the money, the process to wire money is crazy. And so the money was going to get to her on Monday, and she died on Saturday. And this all sounds, but if you, if you would watch your grandmother die, because there's no facilities, if you would watch your aunt die, that, that's how personal it gets. So how would life change for these people if this hospital could become, I believe there could be not just physical healing, but spiritual healing Amen. for them as well. This, this hospital is going to have its own pastor. And we already do Jigger Day where we take kids and soak them in ointment to get rid of the worms inside of the parasites in them. And then we follow up every child. We follow up spiritually. And so these people will come like groves because we're out there. We're in a rural area. Uh, even doctors from the U.S. came and used our facility and left $4,000 cash because he said, you're on it. You see the need. This is what this area needs. And so the life changing is these people can't afford. They don't have a dollar. They, they can't even afford, they, they'll sell their, their daughters for a dollar for prostitution to feed their family. So they don't have the dollar to send them for physical help. And so this is so crucial to help them, but not only uh, medically. This, this is going to open up the kingdom of God. Why, it's like he's given us a wound that, that he, can, he can heal. All right, hold that thought. We are out of time for this show, but we need to hear more from Janelle. So stay with us. Be sure you watch in weeks to come. We're going to have Janelle back on to tell more about the story about this hospital. In the meantime, you need to go to unrained.com, and that's where you can find out more information about everything that Janelle is talking about now. We'll be right back after this.